morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the IMCX podcast. Uh, and today, my name is Roger Nicholas with Island Analytics and Marketing. Welcome back to another episode. And today's guest is uh, someone I respect quite a bit, um, a, a legend in the Caribbean, actually. Um, and I, I'm not trying to make him blush. I'm just, I'm just saying it as it is. Uh, he comes from a wealth of experience, and I'm going to share that with you. Today, we're going to hear from Mr. Nigel Romano, who's a chartered accountant and banker with extensive global experience in banking, finance, and public accounting. A member of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Trinidad and Tobago and is a graduate of the University of the West Indies in management studies, accounting, and earned an MBA from Jack Welch Management Institute um, and is certified by Balanced Scorecard Institute and Foundations of Neuroleadership. He is currently pursuing certification with Strategy Implementation Institute. Uh, Nigel joined uh, more partners in Trinidad and Tobago, which is a uh, chartered accountant as a partner with responsibility for business coaching and advisory services back in 2019. But prior to this, and this is where this is the legend I know, right? This is how I came to know of the Nigel Romano. Um, is prior to this, he was CEO and managing director of JMMB Bank, Trinidad and Tobago Limited, a subsidiary of the JMMB Group, a position he held from 2015 to 2019. He started his career with KPMG, then joined Citibank, where he spent 21 years in five different countries, starting as CFO in Trinidad and Tobago. He, he also worked with cities, businesses in Indonesia, Hong Kong, Singapore, and the Philippines. He has also held senior positions with Ernst & Young in tax and, uh, tax and corporate finance as a partner with the Anton Macau Group, with Caribbean Development Bank, and uh, as Director of Finance and Corporate Planning and Vice President in Operations. Nigel has served on several boards in both the private and public sectors in Trinidad and Tobago, uh, and he's currently the Chairman of the National Flour Mills Limited, National Insurance Property Development Company Limited, and the Caribbean Corporate Government Governance Institute. He serves as director on the board of ANSA Merchant Bank Limited, where he chairs the audit committee and is a member of the FIFA-appointed normalization committee overseeing the affairs of Trinidad and Tobago Football, uh, Trinidad and Tobago Football Association. So help me warmly welcome the legend, Nigel Romano. Thank you. Nigel, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate you so yeah. much. Good morning, and thank you for that introduction. I am not, I don't, I don't think of myself as a legend in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> that good yes. humility is good. <laughs> it's it's preferable. Yeah, but I'm, I'm, but I'm very passionate, passionate about customer experience and the customer, and how we, how we treat the customer. So I'm looking forward to the conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, ladies and gentlemen, our producer had an emergency today, so um, he's not with us, but um, I am going to do my best to be both technical guru as well as best interviewer slash male Oprah, right? So laugh with us when you see things happen that are fun. Um, now, Nigel, I, I use the word legend very honestly and respectfully um, because when I, um, when I got into consulting in Trinidad and Tobago, um, with a company that was uh, strong in customer experience and market research, as well as trade marketing. Your name came up as a leader who was kind of pioneering when it came to customer experience. So we're talking about 2017 here. In 2017, mm -hmm. our company had been talking about CX for about two years, and nobody knew who, knew what it was about but there was only one company that had a customer experience manager of some type by the name of Lisa Maria Alexander. You may know her well. Mm -hmm. She was one of our guests and she's actually the most, most watched episode so far of the, the, okay. the nine that we've done. So you have no pressure there on you, no pressure. Um, <laughs> but, um, but because of who the noise around who and your leadership, that's how I came to know you or, or know of right. you. And, and what you've been doing with JMMB and leading them in that path. And you were really pioneering in that regard for the region of the Caribbean. So that's why I say legend, right? It, it, it really does have a history and there's real facts behind it, right? So, um, 
So, so let's kind of dive in and get to know you and then have you teach us and our audience. Tell us a mm -hmm. little bit about your C-suite journey before you joined more partners and, and what first sparked your awareness of customer experience strategy. Okay. Um, well, I, as, I, as I said, I started my career as, a, as very much in, in chartered accounting. Um, mm -hmm. I was an auditor with KPMG mm -hmm. and uh, um, enjoyed auditing and, and accounting. And, and for me, as I tell people all the time, accounting is a language, it's the language of business. And it has mm -hmm. very little to do with with the numbers as a, as opposed to representing what what's going on in the business yes uh and i spent nine years with kpmg at the start of my career and my first experience in the c-suite was at cfo for city bank trinidad mm -hmm. okay and i spent six years at city bank trinidad we, mm -hmm. we basically transformed the organization mm -hmm. growing its bottom line from five hundred thousand. US dollars to 20 million US dollars in in six years. Hmm. Wow. And when you do that, you get noticed. Uh, yes, the yes, you of that, uh -huh. most, of, <laughs> most, of, most of the guys on that team went off to different parts of the world. My boss, Suresh Maharaj, went to the Philippines. Mm -hmm. I followed and I went to Indonesia as CFO for Indonesia. Again, another another situation where we had to, to turn around uh, 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 so one of the key operations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and um, Steve Bideshi went to Turkey. Mm -hmm. I think Dennis Evans went to South Africa. So the, the team was noticed and, and the team went on to do good things with the team. Right. Now, while I was... CFO in Indonesia, City had an initiative. Um, City had followed the, the, the Six Sigma methodology or was following the Six Sigma met methodology. Yes. And, and I don't know if you're familiar with Six Sigma, but it's mm -hmm. about perfecting processes mm -hmm. so that you, you get to the stage where you only have 3.4 defects right. per right. million opportunities. Mm. Um, and 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 as a result of that, we I was put on a on a dream team, if you will, to redesign City's credit process. This is uh, globally. Okay. And wow. we were we were sent to Singapore for for three months and locked in a room, and said, um, guys from various disciplines, and we had to redesign the credit process. Mm, and as a familiar. result of that experience, yeah, and, and the focus on, on improving the processes and really focusing on the customer experience, the, the regional head for the city corporate bank in Asia called me um, uh, but later on in that year, he had just taken over. Mm -hmm. So this was, this was in 19. 1999 and the, the challenge was late 1998 somebody must have said something yeah, yeah. but he called me as the CFO of Indonesia and asked me to be his quality director for the region mm. and I and I laughed and I said no thank you I'm not interested <laughs> I'm, I'm wait, a, why, I'm did you, why did you why did you turn it down because I'm a, a I'm a finance guy, and yeah. and the history at that point in time was City had just merged with Travel. Mm -hmm. I'm familiar with that because yeah. yeah, and Sandy Wild was not a, a customer experience guy. He was basically a, uh, died in the world capitalist who didn't have any appreciation for the customer experience. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I told Steve Long, who was the regional head, I said, "Look, Sandy Wild is going to kill quality." And I and what do I do then? <laughs> mm. And then he he said, "Come, take, jump on the plane, come to Hong Kong, let's talk." <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, we spoke, and 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 I was intrigued, and and I eventually changed my mind and accepted the job, and I did. I was the quality director for Citibank 
in corporate, city corporate in Asia for, for two and a half years when Sandy Wild killed the quality. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and ladies and gentlemen, just to give you the, this is a scientific term, kill the quality. But what he means is Sandy Wild was the CEO who merged banking, insurance, and investments together for the first yes. time um, after the, was it the legal legal something act that was struck down or something like that in the u.s yeah, the, the glass glass, glass, Siegel, glass, glass Siegel, Siegel. Yeah. right glass Siegel act which prevented yeah. insurance banking and investments from working together exactly. and i know that because right, i actually right. joined one of the city group companies in 1999 <laughs> so i'm very right. familiar with okay, the timing of sandy interesting, interesting and what he did help. yes 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 yeah, so go ahead yeah. sorry, so, sorry but, to go ahead but, so but he was I mean, killing quality <laughs> Well, well he, he didn't understand the whole thing about process and six sigma and all of that good stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so he didn't really see the need for um, an, a, 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 a department, if you will, called quality. Yes. Um, but the point is that, I mean, I, as a result of that experience, uh, my appreciation for process and process improvement mm -hmm. focused on the customer experience. Yes. Then it, went through the roof, and I, I have, yes. yeah, I have, I have no regrets about that. Amen, um, amen. The because because you know people don't understand that you have to define quality. You have to be very specific about what our customer experience looks like. Mm -hmm. But more importantly, you have to measure. Yes. what you're delivering to that customer. So, and, and, yes. and you have to engage the teams and all the teams because, you know, the, the handoffs and that kind of stuff. And I, I see it all the time and I can't help myself. Yeah. <laughs> where you realize that these guys don't know why they're doing what they're doing. They're doing. Mm -hmm. Why, what, what does that customer experience look like? And then you get, the, the 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 pluses where you see a team that understands that mm -hmm. they're here to serve and they're here to make sure that that customer experience is mm -hmm. is second to none mm -hmm. and they um, recognize and, too that, that there's an ROI for that it, type it, of behavior yes yes of course of yes. course um because you know, you want you want when that customer comes in contact with your organization that they leave with 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 a really good feeling, and they're going to go out there and talk about what what they experience. And and that's what attracted me to 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 GMMB later on because Joan Duncan's vision of love. Mm -hmm. I mean, who who talks about in a bank about a vision, vision of, love? of love? Wow, is that is that really yeah, how you introduce yeah. it? A vision of love? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. This was <laughs> this is this is this was part of GMMB's core values. Um, that was a, that I was Mariah Carey's how... first song, by the way. If you didn't know, all right, vision of okay. Love, back no, in 19, 19, yeah. uh, 99, 1990. Some of nineteen ninety. Right, okay, yes. well, that's yeah. good. Yes. But the whole vision of love was how do we ensure that customers feel the love? Mm -hmm. And that love was translated into how we how we interact with them, how we advise them, how we mm -hmm. engage with them, mm -hmm. how we made them feel. Remember, most people walk into a bank and they intimidated. Yes, that is and true. And the idea was to make them feel loved and yes. welcome when they yes. walk into the bank as opposed to being treated like, you know, what you're doing here kind of stuff. Yeah. And again, you have to be very clear about why you're doing what you're doing. You have to measure, measure what, what you doing. did. Yeah. Okay. And you have to, you have to be interacting with, with those customers. You know? And, and you will make mistakes. Yes, that, that's that. That's be clear about that. That's that's par for the course. Yeah, the the what one of the things I I like was this whole concept of service recovery. Mm. Having made the mistake, what How do, do you we do, do next? Yes. How do you recover from that mistake? And the 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 data is very clear that if you do the service recovery properly. Mm -hmm. 
customer satisfaction can be exceeded from where it was before the incident took place. No, Again, I, understanding that is very, very clear. I'm rubbing my hands because I'm getting excited, right? My paws are raised because I know school, <laughs> school is in session, right? Class just started, as we say in, in Trinidad. But I don't want us to go down that side yet. I want to, because... All because, right, no problem. Because today's focus is about, about looking, helping our C-suite listeners understand um, what the, the type of pain points that they have as CFOs and CEOs mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. help them understand how customer experience strategy can actually address their concerns. What I like to call the mm -hmm. C-suite love language, right? Because mm -hmm. if, if we don't get C-suite to appreciate what the strategy can do, we're not going to have their buy-in or support and we're going to have a killed program before the year is over. Mm -hmm. so, so I want to ask this question specifically. Before your eyes were open to customer experience strategy, or I should say, before you really owned that quality process and, and completed doing it after two and a half years, what were some of the business challenges you were experiencing in your role in C-suite? What did you notice was happening in businesses that did not understand or apply or adopt customer experience strategy? Well, so let me step back to, to the whole question of process. Mm -hmm. And, and process improvement because the, the customer experience is part of a value delivery process. Mm -hmm. And if you don't understand the, how you deliver value and how you get rid of non value added. Um, system steps in the steps. process. Yes, uh -huh. exactly. Right. Um, you won't be able to improve the efficiency with which you deliver that value. Yes. So, so quality is not just about the client experience from a CFO point of view, which which I was when I was introduced. Mm -hmm. The 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 critical thing there is improving productivity. Mm. So the, the beauty about the quality experience is that you're not only improving the, 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 the client satisfaction or the customer satisfaction, you're not only delighting the customer, right? but you're doing so in a way that reduces the cost of delivery uh -huh. by making that cost, by, by making the process a lot more efficient, by That's getting that. rid of stuff that you don't need to do. Yes, that is called that. What you're talking, so we're talking about the the C-suite love language now. You you made the direct connection. Yep. Yes. Okay. Continue. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So the, the, for me, the point is that you're not doing quality mm -hmm. for quality's sake. Right. Right. You're doing quality to one improve that client experience and mm -hmm. get repeat business, get people recommending you to others. Yes. But you're also doing it to make the process of delivery a lot more efficient. Yes. By removing the, the one, the non value added, but mm -hmm. also reducing the errors, reducing the rework. Right. 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 So it's, it's both and. Yes. It's in, increasing the yes. top line and reducing the cost the of delivery. Yes. So, so let, me, let me see if I can. <laughs> flesh out that a little bit so what i'm hearing you say is you 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 see from your cfo eyes um that customer experience strategy allows a company to when when they improve quality of the experience it's not simply the client experience quality for the client but it's also quality for the systems the internal systems and processes of the business and in those efficiencies Precisely. that are gained, you have savings on cost to serve or cost to deliver, mm -hmm. um, probably even cost to acquire new customers. Because if you have very happy customers who are staying longer, they're probably going to tell some of their friends. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Exactly. All right. Good. Audience, All I right. hope you're so taking the, notes. The, taking the, notes. The Schools cust in session. The customer, your customer acquisition cost should, should fall. Yes. 
and their process delivery should become a lot more more more, more efficient. efficient. Right. Okay. Awesome. But the important thing here is that you have to measure. When I when I when I was part of that um, um quality the dream team to redesign the credit process. Mm. I mean the I mean we were we were putting up um stick um post-it notes and, and, and mapping processes. Mm -hmm. And and the the before it had a name aha moments. <laughs> before right? it had a name. Aha yes. moments were well why are we doing that? Mm. Why do we need to do that? You know, that kind of thing. What what if we cut out this? Yeah. And then the other thing that came out of that was digitizing the process. Mm. So that somebody could be in Indonesia, somebody could be in Singapore, somebody could be in Hong Kong, somebody could be in Manila, and they all part of the process and the handoffs are seamless. Right, right. <clears throat> As a result of that, we had we, we had these big, big um, centers of excellence. Mm -hmm. Manila, um, Bombay, uh, Mexico. Florida kind of stuff. Nice exotic places. We follow, we follow the sun. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. You know, right. Every, that, that, there is, I mean, the, the, the death, what do you call the death of the sun? <laughs> the de yes, yes. But it allows you to play all day long and solve problems all day long and yeah. provide the best service, best experience all day long. Exactly. So, so exactly. Oh, thank you for breaking that down. Thank you. Um, so, you know, sometimes businesses make the mistake of focusing only on making things happen for the customer or, mm -hmm. or, or the bottom line without acknowledging the role of, of that employees play in meeting those two goals. Do you recall in your in your Asia, in, in your days leading the, the team in Asia, the energy amongst the employees who had not yet adopted or been placed into a customer experience type environment, a customer focused environment. Was it, was it different? I, what I'm trying to get to is, what is the pre-customer experience um, impact on the employees and how things were, and then the post? Can you, you do you have a, an idea or do you, you understand what I'm saying? No, I, I do, I mean, and, 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 and that was a good thing. Mm. <clears throat> there are not just the, paying customers outside the organization. But you have to get everybody in the organization thinking customer. Yes. And so some of those internally. customers are internal customers. Yes. And when people think about, okay, this is my customer that you're in human resources and and or you're in the, the people, the people business. Your customers are the people in the organization who you serve and you want to make sure that their experience mm -hmm. as team members is 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 a, is something that is enjoyable and as 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 you say at, at, at JMMB, we want to make every experience easy and enjoyable. Mm -hmm. Um so when you start thinking in terms of easy and enjoyable, you have a different mindset. Absolutely. And and your focus is on how do I make this interaction easy mm -hmm. for the, 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 the internal employee, the external employee? Mm -hmm. And how do they understand the linkages right. and the handoffs so right. that nothing falls between the cracks? You never want a person to say, well, that's not my, that's not my job. You know, if I somebody that says that, yeah, 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 that's not my job, mm -hmm. you know, well, you are part of a process. Yes. You are part of a system that is delivering value. And that solves and a problem for a understand. customer. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Right? And if you don't have that kind of mindset, you have a problem. Absolutely. Uh, and the impact is ridiculous on your, your, your cost to serve, on your revenue, on your customer retention, mm -hmm. on your, uh, the efficiency of your processes. Um, and, exactly. oh, and, and and the one that CFOs and CEOs don't like, brand reputation is compromised. You don't want to be known <laughs> as the brand that doesn't take care of their customers or their employees. Yeah. 
um, that, and, dis that destroys you. Yeah, and, and again, you have to be very deliberate about how you define value for your customer. Yes. Because again, if you're not clear about that definition, then nobody's going to be clear about the definition. Correct. Correct. You know? Um, and, 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 and you need the employees it, aligned and on, on the same no, page. No, no, exactly. To, to you, you have to spend that time with them and educating them because it's, mm -hmm. it's not intuitive. Yes. You have to be deliberate. Yes. And 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 yes. then you have to measure. Yes. I'm a big, big thing. I'm very big, big on measurement. measurement. Yes. Oh, yeah. What well, gets measured gets managed. Gets done. What gets yes. managed gets done. Yes, yes. <laughs> but, you know, it's, and it's, and, Measuring is important for the simple fact that you want to know if what you have in place is doing what you expect it to do or what it's supposed to do. And if it's not, where the gaps are. And when you mm -hmm. identify the gaps and you take corrective action, you want to know if your corrective action is taking you back okay. on track. So exactly. there's, there's a baseline measurement necessary and then a post-corrective measurement necessary each time. Because yep. not, only does, not, only, not only does the... The, the 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 not only do new gaps show up, but the customer's expectations change, and exactly. you want to be catching that before it become before the momentum is is it's too late for your business. You also want to yeah. catch gaps in the employee experience, um, which is why uh, best practice in employee experience measures is more shorter uh, measures as opposed mm -hmm. to one big hundred question measure once a year that captures exactly. too much data that the company never gets to address or share back to the to the to the corporation so so i appreciate you hammering home customer centricity and and the the internal customer and the external customer and making sure mm -hmm. that there's ease and what was the jmmb called ease and easy and enjoyable easy, easy and easy. enjoyable because customers yeah. want easy. an easy and enjoyable experience but employees exactly. do as well they want to feel exactly. valued. They want their work to be easy enough. They want to be able to solve a customer's problem mm -hmm. as easy as possible. So that makes them look good and then makes the company win. So yep. thank you. Awesome. Like that. Um, wanted to discuss an idea uh, supposedly that supposedly shifted paradigms um, some time ago. The concept is that there's a difference between transactional marketing, transactional marketing approaches, and relationship marketing approaches. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know if you agree, first of all, I, start, I guess that would be the first question. Do you agree? And, and how did you see that difference manifest? Or how do you see that difference manifest in your, um, in your experience at, in, in GMMB after you became a, a, a customer, a customer experience advocate? Mm -hmm. So I will, I, will, I will throw it back at you. How do you define transactional and relationship? All right. Marketing. So, so transactional relationship marketing is is uh, is defined as the approach that goes is going for the sale. So it has mm -hmm. a short term focus. Right. Um, it's very product driven. Let's build the best widget and sell as many as we can. Relationship marketing approaches lean on longer relationships mm -hmm. and more customer understanding so that it's not product driven and it's not transaction driven it's about solving problems that are bespoke to the relationship you've built with the customer so there's more time invested there's mm -hmm. more um, thought and insight put into the design of that widget it's not just one widget to sell to anybody that needs a widget it's first identifying relationship marketing approaches will identify, okay, who needs widgets the most that will want to pay for it? What does that profile look like? And how would they need that widget designed? Mm -hmm. And you want to make sure, of course, that whoever you're selling to, there's enough of those people who need that problem solved and would pay for it <laughs> before mm -hmm. you start selling, build, building that widget. So sometimes with transactional marketing approaches, companies find themselves um, designing products where they haven't consulted customers, they get no feedback from customers, and it's all about moving the sale. 
Mm-hmm. Um, but that affects things like retention, that affects mm-hmm. loyalty, uh, unlike relationship marketing approaches. So tell me if you've seen, if you if you noticed that type of difference at all as you started deploying and adopting customer experience strategies in Asia and beyond. Yeah. The 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 for me one is marketing and one is selling. Mm-hmm. So I, I wouldn't even call um transactional mm-hmm. I wouldn't even call it transactional marketing because it's focused on, on getting stuff stuff out the door. Yeah. And it's 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 not focused on building a relationship, building loyalty, building that long term um connection that long-term connection exactly mm-hmm. um and and for me the companies that start with and, and, and I'm, I'm sure you know i'm a big jim collins fan mm-hmm. you have to start with purpose and if you identify your purpose very clearly and your value mm-hmm. then you're in a situation where you say okay i exist to create this value and and any any conversation about value has two questions that goes with it of value to whom and for what right so once you identify who you are creating value for Mm -hmm. and what they will what value you're creating for them you have a totally different conversation yes because now you focus on solving somebody's problem creating mm-hmm. value for a specific demographic, a specific customer set. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And once you have, have that, your challenge is, okay, I'm creating value. How do I capture value for myself? Right. So it's win-win. Yes, yes. It's not win-lose. It's not, let me flog this out and get it out the door and right. the hell is with what happens after, <laughs> after the customer pays. It's about creating value and making sure you capture enough of that value so that you can build a sustainable business. Yes. If you have that mindset, then there's a whole different world here. So, so let's bring it back to, to your peers, mm-hmm. the C-suiteers mm-hmm. and the C-suite love language. What is that conversation like if you come into an organization or, or a department, if you're in the lower rungs, um, and you notice that we're more product driven or sales driven, and we're not spending enough time understanding the needs of the customer or building relationships. What is that conversation like to 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 gain buy-in, to see the vision, and to move forward? Let me give you the example with with GMMB Express for now. Okay. Oh yes. Yes. <laughs> um, my good friend Elton James, brilliant. Exceptional. I worked with him at the Unicoma. <laughs> Good. Um, he joined and, and he said, okay, what, what do we want to create here? Mm-hmm. And we looked at the market and there is definitely that niche between the people who go to the, the higher purchase guy. Right. And the courts and, and, those, and that kind of those those kinds of organizations, yeah. yeah, and 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 the people who who use a credit card mm-hmm. and and max out their credit card and then end up in deep trouble, yeah, <laughs> and 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 there is a niche there. How do we capture that market? Because these people want to, like everybody else avail themselves of the various appliances and the furniture and that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And we sat down and said, look, there is a, there is a, there is a space. So we are creating value for those customers by giving them finance and small finance, mm-hmm. but very, very efficient using the technology to identify their track record and that kind of stuff. Uh, right. And not digging out their eye, 
by charging them 50 and 60 percent interest rates right and, and let me but just for somewhere, the, let me just sorry ahead. to sorry to pause you we have a very diverse audience from europe asia africa and the caribbean uh, and the u.s okay so digging out your eye folks is the scientific caribbean term for <laughs> taking advantage of a customer by charging them too much. That's the term yeah. we coined in yeah. Trinidad and Tobago. Digging out your eye. Now you uh, know. What, All right. <laughs> what you will call usurious, usurious interest rate. Very, yes. very high interest rate. Yes. yes. And, the, and the result of that, and, and in that interaction, you're also educating the customer. Mm. Also, right? there was a strong and, education and, focus. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so that you you help them to 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 realize their goal the rates mm. were closer to credit card rates mm -hmm. and the interaction was a lot more i suppose consultative and personal nice. and you built and of course you get the word of mouth hey a german be treat you like people King. yes yeah they yes. treat you like you know they educate you they help you they guide you and in and you may think that the the delinquency rates were through the roof. They were not. You know, this was excellent business. Um and 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 it's it's doing wonderfully well. You know, um customer so, experience. So research, again identifying uh, that that where you creating value. For whom how you create how you're creating value and, and how you how how you can capture that value mm -hmm. enough of that value to make it worthwhile to your to your business so so i heard a, a whole lot of nuggets in there that i want to tease out for the audience right mm -hmm. you talked about you identify a niche between your typical banking customer in trinidad and mm -hmm. tobago or in the region and then those who were using credit cards because that was a relatively new phenomenon for us in the region mm -hmm. Um, and after that, you then identified what was the most efficient way to offer them service, get their problems solved, mm -hmm. and then you bonused that with relationship building, advising. So mm -hmm. literally, those, those people who fit that niche, or what we call in customer experience, the ideal customer profile, mm -hmm. will find themselves being served the way they want to be served in a, a, a customized and personalized way. And they now have a financial advisor without mm -hmm. having to be a millionaire. Mm -hmm. That does a lot for the average customer. But I want to dive into another piece of it that I don't be want before, to Before miss. you dive, just, uh -huh. just one more thing. Uh -huh. And they have built a track record of Paying and on time and delivering and keeping their their promises. Yes. So go ahead. Yes. So so what what the organization was able to do was by creating an advisory component to an efficient process. It allowed them to build relationships with customers so that regardless of what stage in their financial life lifetime that they're in. I have now built a relationship with an advisor who can advise me, guide me, and support me throughout that journey. Mm -hmm. That's a winning recipe, one that credit unions need to master because it's, it's a place they lose a lot, a lot of opportunity, mm -hmm. right? So I, I wanted to highlight that because that's a transferable gift you just got from the Nigel Romano that you could take to many other types of business models, okay? building that advisory or educational comp component and mm -hmm. offer support and that allows the relationship to be long enough or to build what we know as in customer experience customer lifetime value mm -hmm. because the longer customer stays and and they're satisfied or, or loyal the more purchases they may get the more upsells or cross sells they may acquire mm -hmm. and now they are compelled to do what nigel mentioned which is refer you which lowers mm -hmm. your cost of new customer acquisition because history and research has shown that the financial services industry is the most expensive um, industry when it comes to the cost of acquiring new customers. Mm -hmm. So any way to reduce that cost is critical. Now, the, la the coup de grace is the low bad debt, uh, ba bad debt outcomes in that mm -hmm. scenario. 
The research also supports, the customer experience research also supports, ladies and gentlemen, that when you build relationships with customers, in especially in financial service scenarios, whether it's insurance, banking, lending, mortgages, um, you lower your bad debt ratios because you're able to anticipate either things that may affect their risk worthiness or things that may impede their ability to maintain um, that product or service. So a lot was said in that. I didn't want you guys to miss it. That's why I took the time to pick out some pieces there. How did I do that, uh, Nigel? Okay? Very, very well. All thank right, you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I will do an internship with you anytime for $5 <laughs> an hour. Right? <laughs> so let me jump into the next question because I, I could talk with you all day because I, I want to learn all day, but I, we don't have all day and I want to respect your time. Um, so your legacy shows you're big on mentorship and coaching. Mm -hmm. you know? um, I'd like to understand once you were sold on the idea that a different course of action was necessary and it included customer experience, how did you get your cross-functional leadership teams at, say, JMB to buy in and participate in the transformation? And what hurdles could C-suite teams expect if they're trying to do that? Again, um... The short term thinking is something you have to be very, very careful about. Mm. I'm not saying that you you're involved in business because you're talking about business here mm -hmm. to lose money. Yes. But you cannot go too fast, if you will. Oh, okay. You have to take the time to lay the foundation. Right. And and for me, having those conversations anchored in solid metrics. So again, I'm a big ba balance scorecard advocate. Mm -hmm. And looking at a strategy map, starting at the top, with the outcomes you're looking for, whether it's increased revenue, lower cost, leading to increased profitability. Mm -hmm. How does, how, what do you need to do with your customer to affect that top line? Right. What do you need to do with your processes Perfect. to reduce that, to, to become more efficient? Mm -hmm. And, and and as you read down that strategy map, understanding the how, how do I achieve this? How do I achieve this? And engaging every member of the suite suite. And, and, and again, first who, then what? You have to have the right people in the mm. right roles and right. the wrong people off the bus. Yes. Um, your <laughs> off HR, the bus. Your, your, not off even, the bus. The not even like another seat, off the bus. Okay, no, understand. No, 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 no. Yeah. <laughs> Have to have the right people in the right seat and the wrong people off the, the bus. bus. Okay. All right. All right. Um, and your your so for me, as a CEO, the two most important people on your right and your left, or your left and your right, which TFO and oh, and C C C R C H R O, the human oh, resources. Oh, right. Yes. Okay. Chief people officer, chief people officer, and chief yeah. financial officer. Mm -hmm. They, they, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm downplaying the role of the Any chief others. operations officer. Mm -hmm. None, no, not at all. But I am elevating people. Yes, I hear you. Usually, HR is well, that is payroll. Yeah, you yeah. Know? HR is not payroll. HR is about understanding the. Repeat that again, mind. please. This is a missed <laughs> one. This is a big, big missed one. I like you to yeah, repeat that again, not, please. HR is <laughs> chief people officer, and I, I try not to call it HR because yeah, it's a people are not resources. People Correct. are people. Yes, right, and it's your chief people officer. Yes, right? and and you want to make sure that whoever is in charge of people mm -hmm. understand that as as who, who is that? People are people, as Sato used to say. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. You have to treat people like people, but you also have to be clear 
about why they're there, what, they, what is their purpose, and again, measurement. Mm. Your processes, how you measure those processes, how you monitor those processes to make sure that you're delivering value for your customers mm -hmm. and, and therefore profitability for the organization. Very, very clear. So finance, yes, people, and yes. of course, all your, all your process metrics. Yes. What gets measured? Gets managed, gets managed, what gets managed, gets managed, gets done. Yes. Amen. Amen. Um, and at the bottom of all of that, of course, is the the, the capacity of the organization, the organizational course. capacity, your IT, your people, the culture, all of that good stuff. So um, before I go on to the next question, then you mentioned something. You, you, you started talking about all the various departments. Basically, you're talking about a, it must be a cross-functional effort cross -functional, from beginning exactly. to end, right? Mm -hmm. um, you, uh, what, what was I, what did I, what did I want to touch on? Um, I got pulled in when you said IT and, um, and the other department in terms of training, because now, okay, so C-Suite mm -hmm. has now bought into the idea, okay, Ladies and gentlemen, this is how we're going to lead and solve problems from now on. Mm -hmm. This is our what, and this is our why. This is our purpose. How did how, how do you suggest that companies new to this prepare their organization for the rest of the organization? Because like you mentioned earlier, everyone has to be on the same page as, as far as frontline all the way up to C-suite. So once mm -hmm. C-suite is on board, what's next in terms of getting those that work with C-suite and those who work below the, man the managers and directors and so on and so How do you, mm -hmm. what do you suggest is the, what have you seen work best? I guess that's the best question. Mm -hmm. What has worked best to spread the, spread the message and infuse it into the company? For me, the, each, each one of those C-suite leaders has to understand how they create value huh. for the organization. Okay. So finance is about making sure that um, the financials are timely, that, that we are looking at the right things, whether mm -hmm. it's working capital management, process efficiency, et cetera. Mm -hmm. and, and each one of those should have some, some visualization of their process mm -hmm. and the key performance indicators. Again, mm -hmm. going back to measurement, right? Um, and of course, they need to be focused mm -hmm. on on what is important, not the not not the it's it's not the urgent. It's the urgent what, it's what matters done. most. Yes. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. And and in a number of situations, you will find that what is urgent and not important. Oh, sorry, what is important and not urgent is where you should be focused. Mm. And a lot of people, of course, def defer and defer and defer mm -hmm. and defer. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it doesn't get done because it, it's important. It takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of effort. Mm -hmm. And and people will, will, will put it aside. I, well, I, have, I have to hold this fire here. I have to hold that fire yes. here. Urgency and, and, takes and, precedence as opposed to importance. Ex mm. Exactly. And it mm. and the trivial it yeah. also yeah. also takes takes um distracts. distracts I think right. the, the appropriate word is, is distracts. Distract. Yeah. Okay. Um so so again that 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 is, is critical. And again, if you use your if you use a good uh, strategy map following the balance scorecard process, mm -hmm. you should be able to identify the critical things that you need to be working on. Right. Um, and, and, and just to help the audience and, and, and make this what I like to call CXY, all right? CXY. <laughs> CXY. Yes, uh, that's, I, that's, my, that's my tag name. And, and when I post, okay. post information, I call it CX, CXY. CXY. Um, th there's a process in customer experience, ladies and gentlemen, called customer journey mapping or customer mm -hmm. journey analysis. Mm -hmm. And while it may not exactly be a balanced scorecard, it, it offers the same type of thought process mm -hmm. in that you start with almost the end in mind where you want mm -hmm. your customer at each stage of their journey with your business from first thought of, oh my goodness, oh my, I think I need a widget. 
all the way down to the end after they bought the widget and did the widget work and did it work so well and was the service so good that they feel excited about telling somebody you should be buying widgets from A and C company. That's mm -hmm. the customer journey process. So every organization needs to understand as granularly as possible each stage that the customer goes through with their business so that one, you're serving the right customer for your business. Two, your processes are fully aligned with serving that customer and solving that problem. Three, your team, your employees are fully aligned and they have all the tools needed to be optimally problem solving for customers, makes their job easy and enjoyable. Mm -hmm. All right. So, and you're only focused on what matters, the things that drive revenue, that drive loyalty, that manage and minimize cost, and encourage and activate referrals, or which improves your retention as well. So I, I just wanted to uh, make that a little CXC for the audience there, all right? Um, yep. I, I have another question here before we wrap up. We, we, we come in close to the end of time here. Oh gosh, I wish, I wish you had nothing to do and we could talk all day. <laughs> I could cancel everything out, <laughs> but uh, that's, that, that's not real. Um, one of our previous podcast guests said in his book that companies limit themselves by only looking at their peers in their industry when it comes to customer experience, mm -hmm. because he felt you only end up getting, and I'm sorry, you only end up copying your competitors and you mm -hmm. develop no competitive advantage. Mm -hmm. it's, it sounds like you agree, but do you, do you feel there's some transferable customer experience strategies that exist that other industries like tourism or manufacturing or small businesses or credit unions might want to adopt based on what you've experienced in finance? Definitely. Uh, um, <laughs> again, the onboarding process, mm -hmm. the, the communication process, how you interact with your customers. You should be learning from any and everybody and you want to look at best in class, mm -hmm. not what the other banks are doing, what, not what the other credit unions are doing what apple is doing what amazon is doing disney how are they interacting with with how this what, what disney is doing exactly mm -hmm. how are they interacting with their customers and what can you learn from that experience so definitely you should not be limiting yourself mm -hmm. uh, especially today with all the things that are happening with technology with ai and that kind of stuff how could you use ai yes to help with that customer interaction yes ensuring because what you don't want is the ai um does an interaction and and then there is a gap with the handoff yes because that's the, that's the other thing a lot of people are putting kind of automated uh telephones and that kind of stuff yeah leaning on technology and yes leaning on the technology but they don't have either enough humans to take over the the when when it's handed off right or even worse mm -hmm. they don't have the right quality of human mm -hmm. to, to, to deal with the interaction people who should not be on the bus as you mentioned earlier <laughs> well, well i read well some of them should be on the bus but the point is they need to be upskilled you, you have to invest enough um, effort and resources to train them and so that they understand why they're doing what they're doing. Yes. A lot of people don't understand why they're doing what they're doing. You know, and that's, that's part of that. Correct. That's a huge problem. It's literally a process they just repeat and they, with, yeah. without any connection as to their, their, their value in the chain for the organization yeah. and the customer. You're right. You're very correct in that. Appreciate you sharing that. Um, wow. Wow. Oh gosh, this is good. All right. So one more before I ask you, what's next for you? Um, in parts of the world, uh, organizations where they, we may not be as mature with customer experience, understanding or execution, what are the most compelling reasons you would give other C-suiteers or business owners to adopt and lean into customer experience strategy? Interesting question. Um... You have to, for me, the bottom line is, and, and I, 
it's a it's a phrase I use all the time. Show me you know me. Mm. When I, I am as a customer and an, an existing customer mm -hmm, mm -hmm. interacts to the organization, show me you know me. Do, do you know how much money I spend on your organization? Do you know what my likes and dislikes are? All right? And mm -hmm. if you can do that, I mean, Amazon knows me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And and that's because of Amazon's technology. Yeah, yeah. Right? Their process. Um, yeah. And and no, exactly. And the Citibank knows me. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, and and the, the, that for me is is critical. Mm -hmm. So that you have to use the technology, but you have to understand. But you have to give the people access to the technology so that they can mm -hmm. quickly. See, oh, this is Nigel Romano. He has did, 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 did. he has done this in, in the last few days. Okay, now I have a context so that I can have a, a, a conversation. meaningful conversation. A bespoke if, if I, if I don't, conversation. If, exactly. I, 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 a conversation that tells hmm, these people get me. Yeah, they know they me. They understand what I like and what I don't like. Mm -hmm. Show me, you know me. Yes. If you can't do that, then you're in trouble. Mm. Mm. Yes, that, that is a <laughs> So I, I, so for me, it, it that that is the it has to be the start of the any ed, any customer experience education, mm -hmm. knowing your customer. Mm -hmm. So and that comes in the form of and, research, capturing feedback, measuring, um, engaging yeah. one on one. So one of one of the groups. books that I really like is is Jan Carlson's book, Moments of Truth. This is oh, a, yes, this, moments this of is, truth. Yeah, uh, you know, 1989, right? Wow. Um, before before this industry had a name. Is, no, exactly. And and the, the point is, your your brand is a promise. Mm -hmm. If you understand, if your customers and if your employees understand that, here is my promise, my mm -hmm. brand promise. Mm -hmm. And every time a customer comes into contact with your brand is a moment of truth. Mm -hmm. And they will be able to very quickly come to the realization whether or not you are living up to your brand promise, promise mm -hmm. or whether your whole, whole um, you just, marketing you just campaign yes. is, a, is a lie, basically. Yes, it's a, it's a lie. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. yes. You know, so, unfortunately, so I, I, go ahead. for a lot of us, it's it's it, it's a lie. End up being a lot of lies. Yeah. Oh 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 wow oh wow. Um, I I like to ask that question last, kind of like a a final, you know, a final thought, blessing to the audience, and it's always insightful. It's it's always everyone always pauses and then comes up with something. So, ladies and gentlemen, you I, anyway you get copies of this, but you've this university level education here do not miss this okay nigel romano ladies and gentlemen so last question before we wrap up what uh, what led you to more partners after dominating banking quality customer experience for so long what 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 made the switch for you what unmet gap was there <laughs> good question um I have no intention of retiring and doing nothing. <laughs> that that for me is not not something that <laughs> you know people say I want to retire and I want to go and lie down on the beach. I want to go and play golf. Yeah, that's that that's not you. For me, that 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 is a recipe for, for dementia. <laughs> <laughs> right. And I, I know, I mean, my good friend Anthony Tear, who who is the the managing partner, who who is the the, the driving force, and I said he called and he said, why why don't you come and 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 work with me and work on strategy, work on on executive coaching, etc. And I said, mm, good idea. Mm -hmm. And that's what that's what carried me to more. And um, it has been, I mean, I don't go to the office. Mm -hmm. I go to clients. I spend more time with clients and yeah. 
and 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 with my coaches. Yes. Um, so that's 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 why I am doing what I am doing. And of course, I'm writing the the column in LinkedIn on what I call smart, smart money. money. Yes, I uh, I catch yeah. it. I catch it. I for my city group days, I um I still have a passion for financial literacy education. Mm -hmm. Yep. So. I worked with the branch of Citigroup that targeted household incomes between fifty to one hundred fifty thousand US a year, mm -hmm. married couples with kids in a home, and helping mm -hmm. them understand how money works and how to get the best for what they bring home. And so, I, I, that that knowledge is still there, and, and I, you know, mm -hmm. my kids know about how compound interest works and right. and 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 how time is their friend. And uh, because with time and compound interest, you can win the game pretty much even Every if you time. make mistakes. Yes. Yep. Um, and so the earlier you start, the sooner you could, this, this, this could be an option for you. And unless you're Nigel Romano, because you just go over and create a whole new legacy for another 20, 30 years. <laughs> right. So if, uh, if I live to 112, I'm probably going to try to interview again, because I'm sure you'll still be working, talking about, I'm not retiring, Roger. I'm not retiring. No, I'm not. I mean, the point <laughs> is, I enjoy what I do. Yeah, yeah. So, you make you a know, difference. I, yeah, I try. You know, yeah. so and I, but, I, and I, I mean, I run every day, and so I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, to stay healthy, of course. Healthy. Yeah. Well, Mr. Romano, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for saying yes to this. This is a. This is a. This is a. Let me see. When I when I met you at the Oval. For Charlene Pedro's event, right. um, um, that was probably 2018. So okay. this connection is a five-year process for me, right? Okay. So I, I, you had no idea another. how excited I was when you said yes to this. I was so excited. So My thank pleasure. you so much. Thank you so much for adding value to us at the I Am CX podcast, and um, and thank you for your time, your wisdom, and I I, I look forward to tapping into you for many other things um, in future, in near future. And, you know, hopefully God has something in store where we both solve problems together. Yep. And, you know, when you get to dance with Michael Jackson on stage, you know, <laughs> a big deal. Eh? So, <laughs> so you would be the Michael Jackson in this case, right? I would be the, I would be the usher now coming up, you know. All right. But, uh, if, we can, again. if we can help, if we can help one or two other people to, to realize their dreams and 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 make a positive difference, um, I I I am all for that. Okay, awesome. All right, all right, well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us again at another episode of the IMCX podcast. My name is Roger Nicholas, Director of Customer Experience at Island Analytics and Marketing. We thank you so much for joining us. Stay tuned for information about our next event. You absolutely don't want to miss it. All right, so have a great day. Have a, God bless you and go win. Oh,